Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of September 30th. The sun has been extremely active this week, but Earth has managed to miss the line of fire. For example, this filament eruption that went off to the east of us. Now, we also had a beautifully huge uh, ejection that went off on the east limb just a, just a couple days ago. And that same region that gave us that filament eruption has now passed us, and it gave us two M flares just this Sunday. And yet, those have yet to manifest anything that's Earth-directed. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we did have an M-class flare back on the 23rd, but it's been reasonably quiet since then, with only C-flare activity up until the last 24 hours where we got our M5.1 and our 1.0. Now, with everything going either to the left or to the right of us, the only thing we've been feeling consistently is the effects of some high-speed solar wind from a very huge coronal hole that's passing center disk right now. And you can see our storm levels have kept us either at unsettled conditions or just below the storm level threshold. And this extended high-speed stream has brought us gorgeous aurora all over the place. Here's a shot from Minnesota and another one from clear, uh, just north of Spirit Lake, Iowa. It also brought us uh, some gorgeous aurora australis from Otago, New Zealand, and also in Iceland. Now, it can also be seen in space, as you can see here on the ISS. Now, some of you have been asking me, why is there some gorgeous aurora right now, where two weeks ago, during this big solar storm, there was supposed to be incredible aurora, and we really didn't see much of anything? What gives? There actually is a reason, and I'll go over that now. Now, this plot shows us what the solar wind looked like during this storm. And I'm going to focus in only on this yellow line here, because it tells us whether or not the magnetic field in the storm was pointing north, as everything above this dashed line shows, if it's above the dashed line, it's pointing north, and everything below that dashed line, like this region here, is pointing south. Now, if you focus in on that little highlighted region, you can see the only time that this field pointed south in the solar storm is just in this little tiny period right here. And during that period, we had some amazing aurora seen in clear all the way down to Germany. We saw it in Russia. We saw aurora australis in Ontago and New Zealand and also in Maine. Now, NOAA put out some really strong alerts for this storm, and the possibilities for these intense effects made headlines all around the world. But there was a real reason why NOAA put out these alerts. Now, even though space weather is a very active field, it is still very new. And the problem that we have with space weather is the fact that we cannot predict beforehand whether a storm is going to point north or point south. So if I take a look at this storm again and look at the intensity, but it, let's change the direction of this storm. Let's change it from north to south and just flip it over. Now look at what we're dealing with. Instead of the storm being almost completely north, it is now almost completely south. And to give you an idea of what that means in terms of impact, let me compare it to some storms in the past. Now, I've brought up the March 2001 solar storm because it actually has very comparable magnetic field intensity levels and a very comparable speed to the storm we just had. Now, if you look closely at the red highlighted regions, that's the magnetic field strength, both in this storm and in the current storm we just had, if it had been upside down. And you can see they're very, very similar. So what this means is that for the storm on, that we just had on the 12th and 13th, instead of having storm levels that look like this, we would have had storm levels that look like this. Now, if that doesn't drive it home, how about this? These were live images taken in March 2001 over Mount Wilson Observatory, which is just north of Los Angeles. And the aurora were so bright that even taken by a live webcam, which was never designed to, to get aurora, caught them quite vividly. Now, that tells you how intense that March 2001 storm was. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo B. This is our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo B staring at the sun from behind. And you can see there's been a lot of activity. The sun is littered with active regions on the backside. Most of the activity you can see comes from region 2179 that is peaking around the east limb right now, and region 2158, which this was the source of that huge solar storm that we just finished talking about. Returning to the disk, you can see regions 2172, 73, and 75 are now rotating to the west side of the disk, and because they are M-flare producers, that does increase our chances to get a proton radiation storm uh, over the next day, few days or so. But also, we're, don't forget regions 2177, 78, and 79 are rotating onto the east limb, so that will keep our chances for M-flares pretty high all through this upcoming week. 
Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the next few days, NOAA has given us about a 25% chance of a minor storm conditions over the next couple days with it beginning to taper off. That's at high latitudes. At mid latitudes, expect unsettled conditions with only about a 20 to 25% chance of uh, active conditions uh, for the next couple days. Unless, of course, we see anything from that solar storm associated with that M5.1 flare, and that would hit late on October 2nd into October 3rd, which may raise uh, the chance chances for aurora possibilities just slightly, but not expecting too much at this time. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the next few days, we do have quite a few M flare producers on the disk right now. So NOAA is giving us about a 75% chance of an M class flare with an X class risk of 20%, and that should continue throughout the week uh, with regions 21, 72, 73, and then 75, as well as possibilities with 70, region 77 and 79. Uh, and then radiation storms, as those other regions rotate off to the west limb, you're going to start getting an increase in uh, radiation storm possibilities uh, up to about 20%, which then should taper off as those regions disappear behind the west limb. So this week looks to be packed with potential. We have a lot of active regions on the disk right now that are, are unstable enough to give us more M-class flares. And along with that might come more solar storms that could be Earth-directed. Now all these storms cause things like your GPS to be disrupted, uh, they can also cause issues with your satellite phone or your satellite internet, and also you ham radio operators, you could expect to have more disruptions, uh, especially if these M flares continue to happen. But meanwhile, we don't have any solar storms that are going to be hitting us right now, so uh, we get a respite for Aurora, but we'll be sure to let you know as soon as that changes. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.